Hey guys, I uh, hope you're doing okay. We are in, uh, I've lost track, but we're pretty far along into, um, into our online Sunday school. If you guys did the, um, the, the daily devotionals last week, uh, great job. If not, I encourage you to still look back on it, do it this week. Um, it's one of the things that I really want to start uh, promoting in our youth group is um, kind of taking that and, and making it our own, right? So taking your faith and instead of having, you know, adults or other people tell you what to do with it, um, taking the initiative, going into the word by yourself, you know, and that's, um, that's one of the things I really wanted to get going. Um, Sunday school will be starting up next week in, uh, in church. So uh, about time, right? Um, however, if you still have to stay home for, um, you know, family reasons or personal reasons, uh, it's perfectly fine. Uh, what we are going to do is we're going to do um, our 11th and 12th grade class. We'll be doing uh, Zoom. So you will still be able to participate in in the uh, in the Sunday school and it won't necessarily have to be you listening to me but you can actually interact and you can talk and you can listen to what other people have to say as well so I think it's going to be really good for all of us to um, to just meet back together whether it's in person or online and to just share in the word of God together um, last Thursday this past Thursday if you uh, um, if you saw it on Facebook or you know if you came out and helped um, Big shout out. Uh, we didn't get to do a whole lot because some of the plans fell through, but uh, you know, we got to replace some of the old moldy ceiling tiles and we cleaned up our parking lot. And so I just wanted to um, throw a big shout out to those youth again, uh, to the students that came and, and really just, you know, put their effort in to, to make the church a better place. Because, you know, it's not it's not other it's not the adults church. It's not your parents' church that we go to. It's it's your church, it's my church, it's our church together. And I feel like uh, when we invest time into making it nice, when we when we take uh, you know a, a part of our lives and we we invest it into into the church, I think it allows us to just appreciate and and to just love the church for what it is a little more. So hopefully that's something we continue doing throughout the year is um, more of these service days. Anytime there's a project, I'm gonna make sure you guys are are notified so you know. Uh, that something's happening and you know you're more than welcome to come and help out um, because you know I think it'd be it'd be a great thing to do um, for us as we you know as we continue to just walk in in, uh, in the path that God set for us together um, so uh, Wednesday well technically what we did Thursday nights um, We'll transition to Wednesday nights back when school starts back up, uh, but that will be after Labor Day. So uh, this, the Wednesday after Labor Day will be our first Wednesday back into our normal uh, recharge program. So uh, make sure you mark it on your calendar because I would love to see you guys back there for some worship, for the Word of God, and, um, and just fellowship again. Um, this Thursday is skating, so it's going to be it's going to be five dollars a person. Uh, if you if you want to rent rollerblades or or that little pushy cart thing that they have or if you want food whatever form it may be um, it's gonna be um, separate cash that you bring it'll be uh, we'll be leaving we'll be meeting at the church at six well sorry let me rephrase that we'll be leaving the church at six and so make sure that you get here on time so we can get to Duncan and have as much time to skate as possible um, you know if if you take too long and you fall behind, uh, then it'll kind of have to be on you to get there or your parents to get there. So uh, make sure you show up early. Uh, make sure you show up on time. And let's have some fun together, okay? Uh, so today's word is going to be found in Mark chapter 10, okay? Um, and as you're turning to it on your Bibles, in your Bibles, uh, I kind of want to make a point about service, right? It's great because we got to just um, experience what that looks like. Um, on Thursday for some of you. Uh, so and ex what are some ways that we, we serve each other, right? So what is an example of someone serving someone else? Um, have you ever had the uh, opportunity to do something for someone or, or you know, uh, to do something for someone else? And, and what did it feel like? What, did, what was it like when you, when you were able to help that person out with something that they needed? Um, 
because opportunities for us to serve are all around the world, right? Uh, and often the church uh, even pro provides a lot of places where we could uh, we could go to serve, right? And so the passage we're going to look at today in Mark chapter 10 um, is going to look at talking about service in a different way, right? So it's going to talk about the identity of a servant, right? So Mark chapter 10, we're going to be in verse uh, 42, so 42 uh, it goes kind of like this. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, you know, what the, uh, you know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. Um, so Jesus said that Gentiles ruled with power, right? Um, and he didn't say that he didn't he didn't end it there. He said that they lord it over people, right? They use it as a as a tool for bragging uh, of placing themselves above others, right? It's a tool for submission. And um, Gentiles were basically Greeks uh, and non-Jews, right? So anyone that wasn't a, a Jew back then, a Jewish uh, person back then, would be considered a Gentile. And so um, Jesus talks about these Gentile leaders uh, to his Jewish, uh, Jewish disciples because he wanted to show them where their idea of, uh, of a ruler came from, right? So these guys who, who were following Jesus grew up, were born in and grew up in a society ruled by Romans, right? They were ruled by Gentiles, non-Jewish people. And so Jesus was trying to, sh uh, uh, trying to call his disciples not uh, fools. They're, he wasn't calling them fools for not understanding, but he was trying to open their hearts and minds to the ideas of servant leadership. Right? He was saying that people who were uh, of the world, Gentiles of the world, were ruling in such a way where they just wanted to, to be above someone else, to, sum to make others submit to them. And Jesus was saying that that's not what he came here for. He was trying to show them that just like today, right, um, we have to be careful about how much our, our culture uh, is influencing our minds, how much we allow that culture to, to influence our lives and our mindsets, right? Because oftentimes the culture is going to take us in the, in the opposite direction of where God wants us to be. So let's continue on for uh, verses 43 and 44. But it shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave to all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, uh, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Um, and so Jesus is saying that for someone to be great, it's not about being above others, but rather being underneath them, being their servant. And he says that, that we have to be a servant to all, to, to be a server uh, of uh, a believer, right? To, to, be cons to be a believer would be considered the lowest of low, right? And so there are certain obstacles that prevent us from, from being a servant leader, right? And it could be something as simple as pride, right? I don't want to be underneath someone else. I want to be above them. Or it could be something as fear or a lack of knowledge of what to say uh, when you're asked what you're doing. Right? And so these are all reasons that we've either given to ourselves or, or to God or to others when, you know, when we fail at being a servant. And so Jesus was teaching his idea of uh, teaching the idea of being a servant to open his disciples' eyes and, and to to show them the opportunities that they had around them, because he spent uh, a lot of his ministry reaching out to lepers, to the sick, to the lame, to the deaf, to the blind, um, and to those who society has looked down upon and pushed away. And so he's showing his disciples that if they want to be great in the kingdom of God, they need to seek out those who are uh, who have been cast away by others. And so that requires a heart of service. That requires a servant um, heart and a sacrifice uh, of self. And so it's not always easy to serve others, especially when there's no uh, hint of thankfulness or kindness uh, that they return to you. But we have to remember that when Jesus performed miracles and helped others um, and even went to the cross for our sins, he never looked for um, compensation. He never looked for gratitude. 
He did it because that's what God had called him to do. He, he did it because that's the way that God had called him to serve. So let's, uh, let's keep going to, to verse 45. Right? For even the Son of Man uh, came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And so if we look in just that verse, Jesus mentions serving others uh, four times within these past four verses. Right? And he mentioned this to, this to his disciples so often because he wanted to, to reiterate that discipleship uh, to Christ and servants uh, and servitude are, are so closely linked that you can't have one or the other. So, uh, discipleship and the Christian life without service is simply a gathering. It's simply uh, coming together of a few good people who share ideas. And that's not what he's called us to. And so if Jesus dying on the cross was the greatest act uh, of service a man can know, uh, this should affect our willingness to help others, right? Like if that's the, that's the goal, if that's the pinnacle, if that's the tippy top uh, of what service could mean, right? If Jesus was willing to give everything uh, up for, for us, for his disciples, for the sake of his others, his own life, that should inspire us to do the same. Right? There's nothing that we should be that we shouldn't be willing to give up, right? If Jesus gave up everything, then everything should be something that we should be willing to give up, whether it's time, money, effort, uh, or whatever. Right? And so there's nothing greater that someone can do for the kingdom of God except uh, to serve the people around them. Right? Uh, Jesus tells us to be a servant to all. He tells us that we should have a desire to serve, even those in our lives who don't feel to be worthy of that uh, of that service. Right? We have to let this be a reality check for us because Jesus is saying right now that we can't pick and choose who we want to serve. We don't get to choose who we get to serve and who deserves our service. Um, and so if we look in the book of James chapter 2, uh, he mentions that, you know, uh, that faith without works is dead, right? It, it, means, it means that you are serving and um, that acting towards uh, others in good, uh, in good deeds and Christ-like actions, right? Like our faith does no good if it's just for us. Our faith does no good if we keep it to ourselves and don't do anything with it, right? And that's what James is trying to say in that book. In that passage. Um, but we also have to be careful, right? Because we might start thinking that, you know, maybe it's, maybe Christian life is about doing good things. It's not, you know, it's not anything else but doing and, and, and acting. But um, actions and works are the fruit of our faith, okay? So what that means is that our faith um, isn't the product of our actions, but rather it's the opposite, right? Our actions can't save us. Right? No matter how many good things we do in our lives, uh, there's no way that we would ever reach um, the, the, the holiness and purity that God expects, except through Christ. And, and so the only thing that can provide faith and salvation is Jesus, but our relationship with Jesus should produce actions born of faith. Um, especially uh, as it pertains to serving others, right? And so we are called by Jesus to, to be serving others. And the, the passages that we read today tells us that our, if, if our faith isn't accompanied by life-changing action, it may not be true faith at all, right? Because true faith inspires uh, action. It, it inspires response. It inspires us to move and to do something about it. If we are truly transformed um, by saving faith in Jesus... Our lives should be, should be driven toward uh, serving others just like Jesus did. And so as we kind of, um, you know, walk through this week, as we approach school starting especially, um, that's something I want you guys to think about. What is a way that you could serve others um, in the capacity that Christ has called you to? What is something that only you could do? What is something that God has opened up um, for you to be able to, to impact? Um, whether it's in your families or in your homes or in your schools or in your church or even in your friend groups, right? Um, and so um, I really want to encourage you guys to continue up, continue with the good work, continue just striving for his word and, um, 
and uh, I'll uh, hopefully see most of you guys in Sunday school next week, right? Uh, and remember, Sunday school is starting at 9.45, uh, but that does not mean that you can't get there earlier. If anything, you know, if you want to get there at 9.30, you know, we can hang out and stuff. So um, I'll see you guys later and have a, uh, an awesome week.